This LOS is explain the capital asset pricing model, CAPM, including its assumptions and the security market line. The capital asset pricing model. The capital asset pricing model is one of the most significant innovations in portfolio theory. The model is simple yet powerful, is intuitive yet profound, and uses only one factor yet is broadly applicable. The CAPM was introduced independently by William Sharp, John Littner, Jack Trainer, and Jan Mosen, and builds on Harry Markowitz's earlier work on diversification and modern portfolio theory. The model provides a linear expected return beta relationship that precisely determines the expected return given the beta of an asset. In doing so, it makes the transition from total risk to systematic risk the primary determinant of expected return. Recall the following uh, equation. The expected return equals the risk-free rate plus the beta times the expected return to the market minus the risk-free rate, which is the market risk premium. The CAPM asserts that the expected returns of assets vary only by their systematic risk as measured by beta. Two assets with the same beta will have the same expected return, irrespective of the nature of those assets. Given the relationship between risk and return, all assets are defined only by their beta risk. Assumptions of the CAPM. One, investors use mean variance framework. What that means is a return to risk, mean average return, and uh, variance risk, which we've seen graphed many times, return on the y-axis, risks on the x-axis. So investors use a mean variance framework. Number two, unlimited lending and borrowing at the risk-free rate. Third assumption, homogeneous ex expectations. Fourth assumption, one period time horizon. Fifth assumption, divisible assets. Sixth assumption, frictionless markets. Seventh assumption, no inflation and changing and unchanging interest rates. And finally, the eighth assumption, capital markets are in equilibrium, investors are price takers. So remember, this is academic theory, so there's assumptions that are made in theories. Okay, recall that this LOS has explained the capital asset pricing model, CAPM, including its assumptions, which we've done, and the security market line. So now we're moving to the security market line. And we have a graph here on the left-hand side, and we have a little bit of algebra on the right-hand side. So I just wanted to remind you of the LOS that it's explain the security market line. I have a bit of an algebra, which is a nice to have. It's not really a need to have at this point, but it helps really uh, consolidate your understanding of what's going on here, okay? So the first thing to notice is that on the y-axis, we have the expected return of the security, which is normal. But on the x-axis, we now have beta. Remember, um, if we're looking at the capital allocation line, which we did in a previous LOS, that on this axis we had uh, risk, which was noted as the standard deviation. So one of the differences between the capital allocation line and the security market line is that on the security market line, we have beta on the x-axis, okay? So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the chart and we're gonna start here. We can see the expected return of the market. The beta for the market equals one, okay? So the expected return of the market is greater than the risk-free rate because there's more risk in the market. And recall uh, that expected return to the market minus the risk-free rate is the market risk premium. So again, looking here where the beta equals one, we can now look at a stock that has a beta of one. So the stock has, or the security has the same beta as the market equals one. So we'll use that to move over here to the right-hand side and take a quicker uh, a look at the algebra to come up with the equation for the cap M. So if we start here on the left-hand side, the expected return to the market minus the risk-free rate divided by the beta of the market, and we equal that to a stock that also has a beta of one. On the right-hand side, we'd have the expected return of the stock minus the risk-free rate divided by the beta of the stock equals one. It's equal, it's this point right here, okay? Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both sides by the beta of the stock. And when we do that, we can see on the right-hand side, we're now gonna cross out the beta of the stock and we're gonna have the beta of the stock times the expected uh, market 
uh, return minus the risk-free rate divided by the beta of the market, which is one. Uh, and now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move this risk-free rate over from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And so now we've got the risk-free rate plus the beta of the stock times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate divided by one because the beta is one equals the expected return of the stock. So again, just doing a little bit more uh, rearranging left-hand side to the right-hand side, we have the equation for the cap M, which is the expected return of the stock equals the risk-free rate plus the beta times the expected return to the market minus the risk-free rate, which is the market risk premium. So we're going to finish this LOS with one quick practice question. The slope of the security market line represents the portion of an asset's expected return attributable to A, total risk, B, market risk, or C, diversifiable risk. The correct answer is B. The slope of the security market line is the market risk premium. Expected return to the market minus the risk-free rate. It represents the return of the market less the return of the risk-free asset. Thus, the slope represents the portion of expected return that reflects compensation for market or systematic risk. And that's correct. Beta is a measurement of systematic risk. So on the security market line, again, just a quick uh, review. We had the expected return here. On the y-axis, we had the beta on the x-axis, and we started at the risk-free rate. Remember, we had the uh, beta of one here for the market, and that's the return to the market minus the risk-free rate, and that's the slope of the line. So then if we calculated the beta of a stock, let's say the beta was of a stock was 1.5, which was greater than one, we would then be able to calculate the expected return by using the cap M formula, where the expected return of the security equals the risk-free rate, plus the beta times the, the market premium, which is the return to the market minus the risk-free rate. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.